Hello and welcome to 3ABN Sabbath School panel. We're so glad you've joined us today. We have a wonderful study in the Word of God today. We know you're going to be blessed. You know, we're on lesson number four. We're going to be talking about prayer power. We're going to talk about interceding for others. I'm sure you're excited about that as I am. And, you know, again, I know you have many choices, but you decided to join us here and we're very glad for that. You know, we're on lesson number four, so be sure, lesson number four, be sure, and, and get your study guide. Some of you maybe not have your, your guides right now, and uh, you'll want to follow along with us, and you can do that by going and downloading them at absg.adventist.org. That's absg.adventist.org. Get those study guides and join in with us. I know you'll be blessed. As you see, we're getting ready to start, so stay right there. We'll be right back in just a moment. Welcome once again to 3ABN Sabbath School panel. Welcome back. We're going again lesson number four. So get what you need, pencil, paper, we'll get your Bible and sit down because we are going to have a just a wonderful study in the Word of God. You know, those of us who have been through that lesson, you may be going through it the first time right now today, but we went through it. We already have been blessed. The panel has been blessed. Mm -hmm. And while we're talking about that, we want to make sure that we introduce the panel. Not that they need an introduction, but, you know, it's nice. to. We believe there will be new people tuning in all mm -hmm. the time. I'm going to say by the hundreds and by faith, by thousands and by faith, right. millions. That's you know, right. We're praising God for that. So if you're one of the new ones, praise God. How about writing 3ABN and let us know that you're tuning in for the first time. Mm -hmm. Thank you again for joining us here. Okay, to my immediate left, Sister Jill Marconi. It's good to have you. Good to be here, you know, Pastor. I, I, it's, it makes me feel strange to say it's good to have you because, you you know, it, but it's, it's good to work together. It is. And I, I've, always, I've enjoyed it and come to love everyone on the panel and, and most of all is your love for Jesus. That's what yeah. shines Amen. through. To your left, Pastor John Lomacain. Always good to be here and yeah. open the Word of God together. Yeah, yeah. I love it. When he's getting ready for that, you can just see it start coming all <laughs> over his body. You can just see it coming. His mind starts to focus on the Word of God. Mm -hmm. So I always appreciate and love Great. him. Mm -hmm. And you have him to your left there. Yes. Who, who is that? <laughs> well, I don't know. He's one of the he's, new kids on the block. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, because I think I heard it was like what? Was maybe a year, maybe a year or so. Or, or, or more, bit. right? Well, since, since, since you've uh, joined us here, Brother Greg Marconi, I mean, it's, it, it's really is, it's a pleasure to have you. I know that you're busy and you're taking time out to do this, but... It's a blessing to open the Word of God, and I'm looking forward to today's study, Pastor. Thank you. Yes, okay. Yes, and next to you, Brother Ryan Day, Pastor Ryan Day. Man, I'm excited, <laughs> excited for this lesson, talking about prayer. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes yeah. it's going to be good. Uh, and and I, I love that excitement, keep that excitement for Jesus. Amen. You know, I think these, these lessons will bring that out in us because it talks about Jesus so much. Mm -hmm. Let's get in. We're going to get to the first part. Uh, the, the memory text is James 5, 16, and that's one that probably many of you have used. We'll have prayer first. Yes, thank you. Let's pray for that. But Brother John, how about you? Would you have prayer, please? Sure. Yes. Loving Father in heaven, the opportunity is always a blessing whenever mm -hmm. we yes. include your Holy Spirit's power here. Thank you. Amen. And we do pray that now you'll come and fill our minds and hearts. Strengthen us, create a unity, and may this topic on mm. prayer yes. reach out and touch yes. someone today to let them know that prayer will open the door to possibilities mm -hmm. and find in the presence of God the joy that they are looking for. In Jesus' name mm -hmm. we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Because that is our lesson number four. We're talking about the prayer, the power of prayer. Mm -hmm. And I think most of us here, and I know you at home, you, you recognize the need of, of power in our hearts and lives every day. So memory text then in James chapter 5, verse 16. And you have it in your lesson. If you have it, if you don't remember, just be sure and download those and get them and study along with us. Uh, James 5, 16, the Bible says, confess your Trespasses, it says here. King James says what? False? False. Confess yep. your faults one to another and pray for one another that ye may be healed. The effective, or oh yeah, effectual, fervent prayers of a righteous man mm. availeth much. Mm. Mm. You know, that's, that's powerful and probably could spend an hour on that passage of Scripture. But it, it, praise God for that. In our lesson, and I'm going to read because I think that this really hits the spot for the opening of, of, of this uh, 
lesson number four. So I'm going to take it here right from the lesson, what it says, and this goes from, uh, if you have your Bibles, be sure and look in, in Acts chapter 4, verse 31. Acts chapter 4, verse 31. And again, there's some power that really comes here. I, I love the book of Acts because right. it, it's just, it's power packed. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, every time you read a verse and it's like something miraculous happened. God just right. worked another miracle. The people are on fire. Right. God's people are working. Notice what it says here. It says, and when they had prayed, mm -hmm. the place where they were assembled together was what? Shaking. Shaking. It was, mm -hmm. whoo. Mm -hmm. Boy, I like to be, <laughs> I can't help but I want to go on here. That's right. It, it was shaken. I mean, Maybe you felt like that sometime when you were praying. Maybe it didn't mm -hmm. physical shaking going on, but you felt like you were shaken in the spirit. You know that the heaven was close to you. Something, heaven came down. Glory filled your soul. And so they notice here it said they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. I, I'm, I know they were in one accord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they spake the word of God with what? Boldness. Oh, glory. With boldness. I like that. Notice, disciples prayed, and when they prayed, it said they were filled with the Holy Spirit of the living God. They spoke the, world, the word with boldness. Amen. Mm -hmm. Do we not live in a day that we need to have boldness? Mm -hmm. That's you know, right. We come boldly to the throne of God, and we find help in our time of need. But I think if there ever was a time... For where boldness is needed. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about overdoing it. We're talking about holy boldness because God has said it in his word. Right. We may claim it and That's the right. power is ours. Praise God for that. And also the Acts of the Apostle, page 37, our lesson brings this out. And I love this too. It says that there was a great relationship between the prayers and the infilling of the Holy Spirit. We all have been praying. We're praying for the latter rain. We're praying for the power of the Holy Spirit. But notice here that there's a relationship between prayers and the infilling of the Holy Spirit. So if you're in, we need to invite the Holy Spirit, because I believe the Holy Spirit's waiting for the invitation to come. That's right. Mm -hmm. And we invite the Holy Spirit will come. Powerfully proclaiming God's word. Notice it talks about the disciples here. Disciples did not ask for a blessing for themselves merely. Mm. What were they asking? What were they asking? It, most times when we get on our knees and we begin to pray, what happened? We begin to... Oh, Lord, I have needs. Right. Man, about what my, about me, mine, I sometime. And there's nothing wrong. We can pray for those things. But notice what they had on their mind. When we are imbued with the spirit of the living God, other people are on our hearts. The work of God is on our hearts. Good. Notice this. They did not ask for a blessing for themselves merely. They were weighed with the burden of salvation for mm. souls. And I that's believe right. that's what we all should be doing. No, there's no doubt about it. They realized that the gospel was to be carried to the world they claimed the power that Christ had promised. So part of that we're talking about today is claiming the promise of God. He's promised. Sunday's lesson, we'll get into that. Sunday's lesson is to talk about a cosmic struggle. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you look at a cosmic struggle, doesn't that mean that's a universal struggle? Mm -hmm. That's the whole universe. And I'm not big enough to understand the whole universe, you know, all about it. I'm lucky to try to comprehend this little planet that we're, or we're on that what is going on. And so cosmic struggle is going on. And what is it going on for? Would it be going on for the souls and the hearts and the minds mm. of men? There's a struggle that's going on. I'm going to read something about prayer, how important it is before I get into that. Second Testimonies 3.13 says this. I like it. I could end it right here. It says, pray much. Mm. <laughs> pray much. <laughs> for prayer is one of the most essential, and I like the way it said, and I hadn't thought of it so much as it's essential duty. Right. The duty we have as Christians mm -hmm. to pray much. And I've always say, hey, a whole lot less talking and a whole lot more praying. Mm -hmm. You know, Amen. not so much to talk about, but we've got a lot to pray about. That's right. Mm -hmm. Without it, you cannot maintain a Christian walk. Mm -hmm. It elevates, it strengthens, and it ennobles. Uh, it is the soul talking to God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What a Amen. privilege we have as just human beings, mere dust of the earth, sinful. We come to Christ, give our life to Him. We can talk to Him. And I love Steps to Christ where it says 93. Prayer is the opening of the heart, the heart to God as a friend. To a friend. You know, which we, I hear people say all the time, they've been in church for umpteen years, and they say, I don't know how to pray. I don't know how to pray. Well, I don't know if I know how to pray. I just look in the Word of God. And I, I talk to Him as a friend. That's right. Yeah. I go to Him and I can take my thoughts, my cares, my desires, my whatever it is, and I can lay them at His feet, and I know He cares, and I know He hears. Opening the heart of God to His friend. God is always ready. God is always willing to hear. Mm -hmm. Well, 
I'm going to go right on into our lesson here. I guess I better. Time's running out. <laughs> our lesson wants us to compare a few, a few passages of Scripture and ask ourselves some questions here I think is very, very important here, is how do these passages influence our need and understanding of not only prayer, but intercessory prayer? Mm. And I think we need what we can glean from that. Or how valuable really is prayer? What's going on in the world today? Is it something we need to be praying about? And who is in control? If you have your Bible, turn to Revelation chapter 12, mm. verses 7 through 9. Very familiar passage of Scripture, I'm sure, to each one of you. But we'll read those. Revelation chapter 12, 7 through 9. It says, And there was war where? In heaven. In heaven. In heaven Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought against and his angels. Verse 8. And prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. Verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the what? Whole the whole world. world. Now, where was he cast out? He was cast out to this earth and his angels were cast out with him. So we can see now the importance of prayer, how we need to be praying and why? Because the devil is down here as a roaring lion and certainly wanting to seek and to devour those who, you know, give their, you know, just don't accept Christ in their heart and their life. Verse seven really stands out. Something I, I don't think I still understand. But it's something that I've read and I've heard all my life that there was war in heaven. Mm -hmm. And when I was just a youngster, I kept thinking, how can there be, what are you talking about war in heaven? And what kind of a war was it? And what went on here? So rather than go into all that, just food for thought, the Bible said there was contention. There was war in heaven and the dragon was cast out because he went against God. Did he not? Mm -hmm. he, what, what, was the, what, was, what was it over? What was the contention really over? It wasn't over really the law of God, the way God, you know, God was in char charge. The devil wanted to be in charge also. In fact, he said, I'm going to be. Mm -hmm. And so when the devil is cast out to this earth, uh, when he's cast out to this earth, as we, as we think about it here, he was wanting to do all that he could, certainly to take it over yep. and then to set in the place of God. Isaiah 14, isn't it? 13 That's and 14. Right. Right. He just makes some simple statements as he says there, I will ascend into heaven, right? I will be like the, what, the, right. I'll exalt my throne, right, above the stars of God. I will be like the Most High. Mm. Wow. Big, big talk. That's right. A lot of language here after the guy that just got thrown out, <laughs> after the one that just got beat up, as it were, mm -hmm. you know? But he still has a plan, and he brought that plan down here. He started in heaven. He brought it down here. God shows us that there was and is a continue what? Struggle mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's going on down here. Every right. day of your life, every day of my life, we have to realize it's a struggle going on. We need prayer. We need to be praying for our kids. We need to be praying for mm -hmm. our, they say, for, for our enemies, you know, the strangers, each and every one every day because there is a battle royale mm -hmm. that's going on mm -hmm. for the souls of men, mm -hmm. and that's you and me. So when we look at each other during the day, say, you know what, Kenny's maybe going through a struggle today. I need to pray for him. I'm glad that God lays that on our heart from time to time. Right. That sometimes somebody's name comes in your mind. Then what do you do? You, you begin to pray for right. that individual. Manuscript 3, 21, 1900. Manuscript 3, 20, 21, 1900 says this. If the curtain could be rolled back, you would see the armies of heaven are in continual warfare with satanic agencies. Mm. Mm. There's a continual warfare going on. So we have good angels, God and Christ, and we have the evil angels, right? That's and so right. there's that battle royale we call about that's going on for the souls of men. It's, it's almost too much for us maybe to understand. But listen, we are a defeated foe if we do not have Christ on our side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If we've not accepted him as our Lord and our Savior, we will lose this battle. Mm -hmm. But right. if we have him on our side, we are more than conquerors through right. Christ. Isn't that Thank right? right? We're going to make it to the kingdom of God because of who Jesus is. Amen. I've heard people mention it many times. You know, the ticket's already been paid for. And I always like to say, it's at the will call window. Hmm. You don't have to go to It's at the will call. Now, I know that pretty well. When I was younger, I used to uh, you lay aside tickets when I went to the basketball. I'll leave, I better leave that one. <laughs> but I just go to the will call window. You know why? I didn't want to waste time standing in line because I was afraid I was going to miss something. I wish people were more that way about church. Wow. You know, I right. want to be there first, not last. I want to sit in the front, not in the back. Yeah, we live in the time, I'm telling you, verse history where we need to be praying. We need to be interceding for others mm -hmm. because the Bible says that Christ is always what? He's always interceding. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. What an example as he intercedes for us. Should we not be interceding for others? Absolutely Amen. we should be. 
pray for one another, the Bible says. And so I encourage you to pray one for another. Why? Because Jesus is coming. We want to be ready, and there's power in prayer. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Kenny. What a wonderful foundation. Think about that cosmic conflict, oh, wow. the great controversy that's going on and the power of prayer yes. in the midst of that. Mercy. I have Monday's lesson, which is Jesus, the mighty intercessor. Mm -hmm. What an incredible wow. lesson. And we could spend the entire, entire hour just studying that. Yes. Because if anyone knew how to pray, it's Jesus. Yeah. If anyone knew how to intercede for others, yes. it's Jesus. If anyone knew how to win in this cosmic conflict, it's Jesus. So we're going to take a look at his intercessory ministry, both on earth. We'll look at some of those times when Jesus walked this earth and he prayed, mm -hmm. as well as in heaven. So let's start with his time on earth. We're going to the book of Luke. Mm -hmm. Luke, more than any other gospel writer, portrays Jesus as praying during these key moments of mm -hmm. his life. Mm -hmm. And in fact, some of the same stories that are in some of the other gospels don't mention the fact that Jesus prayed, but Luke mentions the fact that Jesus prayed. Mm -hmm. So we're starting with at his baptism. This is seven key pivotal moments in Jesus' life. We're going to start with his baptism. This is Luke chapter 3. Luke chapter 3, and we're going to look at verses 21 and 22. Mm -hmm. When all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also was baptized. Mm -hmm. And while he prayed, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven which said, You are my beloved Son, mm -hmm. and you I am well pleased. Mm -hmm. So what happened here at the baptism of Jesus? Mm -hmm. Prayer opened the heavens, mm -hmm. literally and symbolically. Mm -hmm. Prayer brought the infilling of the Holy Spirit because the Holy right. Spirit defend, descended like a dove. Prayer brought a visible and audible mm -hmm. sign of God's acceptance because God spoke, this is my beloved son. Mm -hmm. Prayer reminded Jesus of who he was. Mm. Let's look at the second pivotal moment. This is Luke 5. Jump over a couple chapters. Luke chapter 5 verse 16. It says, it's a very simple sentence. So he himself often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. Wow. Mm -hmm. Now you might read that and just say, okay, Jesus prayed. But this comes just after he healed a leper. And in the next verse, he begins teaching and then he heals the paralytic. We see in this passage that prayer strengthened Jesus for healing, for preaching, for teaching, mm. for his ministry of saving. Yeah. We see that it was pivotal for him in ministry to continue right. in prayer. Yeah. Number three, we go to Luke chapter six. We see that he prayed before selecting his disciples. Luke chapter six, verses 12 and 13. Now it came to pass in those days that he went out to the mountain to pray and continued how long? All, All night, night in uh -huh. prayer mm. to God. And when it was day, he called his disciples to himself. And from them, he chose 12, whom he also named apostles. Mm -hmm. Now, Jesus prayed all night in prayer. And that prayer empowered him yeah. to select his disciples. Mm. That prayer gave him wisdom and direction. It gave him courage. It gave him what he needed to select those disciples. Um, moment number four. Jesus prayed before telling his disciples of his impending death. We see mm. that in Luke chapter 9. Jump over a couple more chapters. Mm -hmm. Luke chapter 9, verses 18 through 20. And it happened as he was alone praying that his disciples joined him. And he asked them, who do the crowd say that I am? Mm -hmm. And they said, John the Baptist, Elijah, old prophets arisen. They mentioned several things. And then verse 20, he said, but who do you say that I am? Mm -hmm. Peter answered and said, the Christ of God. And then directly after that, Jesus predicted mm -hmm. his death uh -huh. and his resurrection. Mm -hmm. You could almost say prayer enabled him to share this difficult news right. with those people that he loved. It gave him wisdom and tact and the right yes. words and the yes. right spirit. Yeah. And it even empowered him to move toward the cross. Mm. We see Jesus praying again just before the transfiguration. We're still in Luke 9, just a few verses down. Luke 9, 28 and 29. Mm -hmm. 
Now it came to pass about eight days after these sayings that he took Peter, John, and James and went up to the mountain to pray. As he prayed, the appearance of his face was altered mm -hmm. and his robe became white and glistening. Mm -hmm. We see here that prayer brought the presence of heaven, that prayer empowered Jesus, mm -hmm. both spiritually and emotionally, that prayer changed Jesus physically because his appearance changed. We see again that prayer brought the visible and audible sign of God's presence, just like at his baptism. That's right. We see again that prayer reminded Jesus of who he was, yeah. just as at his baptism. And that prayer also uh, revealed these heavenly truths to others, to John and James and Peter. Snapshot number six is we see prayer before Peter's great temptation and denial of Christ. We're in Luke 22. This is almost to the end of Luke. Luke 22, 31 to 34. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, he's speaking to Peter. Indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you mm -hmm. that your faith Good. should not mm. fail. And when you have returned to me or when you are converted, That's strengthen right. your brethren. <coughs> and then Peter says, oh, I've got this, God. I'm going to yeah. follow you. Yeah. And Jesus says, before the cock crows three yes. times, huh. you are going to deny me. Oh, the word prayed there, it says, I have prayed for you. In the Greek, it means begged, okay. beseeched, requested. Jesus says, I love you, Peter, mm -hmm. and I have begged God. God for yes. your soul. Praise that is intercession. Yes, Prayer does. leads to conversions. Yes, Prayer saves others mm -hmm. from the attack of the enemy. Prayer strengthens others' faith. Prayer makes a difference in someone else's life. Yeah. And then the last snapshot we see of Jesus praying is in the Garden of Gethsemane, right before he goes to the cross. Mm. We're in Luke 22 as well, verses 40 to 43. When he came to the place, he said to them, pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw. And he knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if it's your will, take this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours mm. be done. Mm -hmm. Prayer enabled Jesus to surrender. It placed him in that position to accept his father's will and it strengthened him for the coming trial yes. of the cross. Yes. Now let's jump just briefly to the book of Hebrews. This is Jesus' ministry as an intercessor, not just while he walked to this earth, but him in heaven. Yeah. Hebrews is one of the clearest places where we see Christ's intercessory mm. ministry in heaven. We see that Christ is the better sacrifice because he died once mm. and for all. Man. We see that he is a better priest yes. because he can actually take away sin. That's right. And the ministry is based on the sacrificial death found on Calvary. Man. So after his sacrifice, Jesus ascended to heaven and became our high priest. Man. We see that in Romans 8:34. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand mm. of God, who makes intercession for us. Right. Jesus right now interceding at the right hand of the Father right. for right. you yes. and for me. We see that this intercession can only be done by the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. First Timothy 2, 5, there is one God. That's right. There is one mediator mm -hmm. between God and men, the man, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. We see that this intercession is for our sins. Mm -hmm. First John 2, 1 and 2, John says, my little children, mm -hmm. these things are right to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone sins, we have an advocate. We have an intercessor mm -hmm. with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Right. We see that his intercession, the Lord Jesus' intercession, yeah. is complete. Hebrews 7, verse 25. Therefore, he is able also to save to the uttermost. That word in Greek means utterly, completely, forever ever, Ooh. perfectly, through all time. Mm -hmm. He is able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him since he forever lives. He always lives to make intercession for mm. them. Yeah. So in closing, in my section, you and I are called to be intercessors for others. Yes. One of my favorite passages is Ezekiel 22, verse 30. The word of God says, I sought for a man among them who would make a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land that I should not destroy it. But I found no one. 
God calls mm. you and I to stand in the gap for our brothers and sisters. We are called to intercede. Now, we don't forgive sins. Jesus does that right. in the heavenlies. Right. But we are called to intercede on behalf of others. I think of Psalms 2, verse 8. Ask of me, Jesus is speaking, and I will give you the heathen for your inheritance and the uttermost mm. parts of the earth for your possession. So Amen. intercede for the mm. salvation of others. Mm. Praise the Lord. What a wonderful foundation. Amen. I've been blessed already. We pray that you've been blessed also. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back in just a moment. Ever wish you could watch a 3 ABN Sabbath School panel again? Or share it on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter? Well, you can by visiting 3ABNSabbathSchoolPanel.com. A clean design makes it easy to find the program you're looking for. There are also links to the Adult Bible Study Guide so you can follow along. Sharing is easy. Just click share and choose your favorite social media. Share a link. Save a life for eternity. Hello and welcome back to the ABN Sabbath School panel. Again, we're glad you're joining us. We're going to get right into Tuesday's lesson with Pastor John Lomacain. And I'm interested in this. It's very good. Paul's intercessory prayers. Mm. You know, Pastor Kenny and uh, those of you watching the program, intercessory prayer is powerful. Yes. Mm. Uh, we just found out, as Joe pointed out, that intercessory prayer makes a difference. When Jesus prayed for Peter, to me, that was one of the greatest evidences that not only did the Lord pray for him, but the Lord knew that Peter needed to go through what he was about to go through. Mm -hmm. And that's why I like the uh, phrase that Jesus used, when you are converted, oh, okay. strengthen right. the brethren. Mm -hmm. that's right. yes. He didn't pray for Peter not to go through what he was going to go that's through. Right. He said, I'm going to pray that when you go through it, you'll be, you'll be back. Mm -hmm. and, and the evidence that the Lord knew that Peter was going to come back, he says, and when you are, or when you return, oh, oh. when you come back, Strengthen the brethren. Yes. Sometimes the Lord prays for us, and I want you to get this point. Mm -hmm. He doesn't pray for the trials to be withheld. Yeah. He prays for our faith not to fail in the midst of the trials. So many Christians become Christians, and they think the moment the trial comes that I didn't sign up for this. Mm -hmm. Well, the reason why the Lord sends the trial or the reason why he allows the trial, servant of the Lord says, we'll discover that trials are no small blessing in the school of Christ. They are designed to nerve us with the, to, the, to the determination to succeed. So if, it, if the Lord allows a trial, he wants to file down some of the rough edges, Amen. but he will never allow a trial to break his child. Amen. He never sends it to break us. He sends it to lead us to the only place where we find our courage and strength and deliverance. Yes. That's, That's right. why he said to Peter, when you're converted, strengthen the brethren. Yeah. But not only does Christ pray for us intercessorily, I'm going to get to Paul's in a moment, but I have to go to the work of the Holy Spirit. Now, we Thank like you. Romans 8.28, mm -hmm. uh -huh. but I want you to see the precursor, the Thank preamble you. to Romans 8.28, uh -huh. because the reason for Romans 8.28 is verse 26 and 27. That's mm. right. And by the way, the context of this is how God sustains us through our trials. Right. For I consider that the suffering of the present time are not worthy to be compared and then and Paul points out how God steps in and, and intercedes. He works and the Spirit is continuing to keep us from our trials crushing us. Yeah. Mm. Then he starts in verse 26, in the same way or likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. Yes. Mm -hmm. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. Mm -hmm. Even when we pray, the Lord says, you're not really praying for what you need. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it goes on. But the Spirit himself makes intercession yes. That's right. For us with uh -huh. groanings which cannot be uttered. Meaning, for those of you that think tongues is a prayer life, no, you can't speak in tongues. Tongues is not what you think it is. Mm -hmm. It is not an intercessory prayer language. That's right. The well, Spirit well. is the only one that has an intercessory prayer language that you can't utter mm -hmm. with groanings which cannot be uttered. That's right. Mm -hmm. Now, he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is. Because he, now this is powerful, now it goes from the Spirit interceding to Christ interceding. Mm -hmm. He makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Notice, we pray the Spirit intercedes to Christ, Christ intercedes to God. Notice the intercessory chain, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's a Good. powerful chain, reliable. And that's why verse 28 can be 
our confidence. With, with us praying, the Spirit interceding to Christ, Christ interceding to the Father in our behalf, mm -hmm. then verse 28 mm -hmm. becomes a reality. And uh -huh. because of that, we know that all things work together for good yeah. to those who love God, to those who are the called according to mm -hmm. his purpose. If you have the Spirit taking your prayers and mm -hmm. fixing it up, <laughs> bringing it to Jesus, and he takes it to the Father. Yeah, well. How will things not work together That's for good? Right. Come on, exactly. can I get an yeah. amen? It's yeah. my little choir right here. Yeah. <laughs> but we, we have to understand that is the key. You yeah. Don't That's worry right. about your prayer sounding good, because even the nicest prayers still are prayed with this reality. We don't know what we should pray for. That's right. That's right. <laughs> okay, so the Spirit yeah. says, I know what he meant. Wow. So let's take this, Father. Here, Christ, you take it now. Now this makes Good sense. Mm -hmm. It's like um, somebody writes a letter and said, could you edit it for me? Well, the Lord is always editing our letters. You know why? Because he knows the end from the beginning. Yeah. That's right. But in the ministry of Paul, Paul prayed. And what I liked about it, we're going to go to Ephesians 1, verse 15 to 21. We're going to see that not only did Paul pray for new converts, but Paul knew that something happened when he prayed that would not have happened otherwise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we must know that. See, when somebody says, well, I'll pray for you, don't, don't approach prayer as a, well, uh -oh. I'll pray for you. <laughs> prayer is, you're going to talk to God on my behalf? Thank you. Yes. That's right. It's not a, well, let's see, I can't help Please. you financially, I can't help you morally, I can't help you physically. Oh, I'll pray for you. If you're going to go to, into the presence of God on my behalf, I'm going to say thank you yes. for that. Mm -hmm. Because I would rather you talk to God about my problems than anybody on earth. Mm -hmm. yes. Because nobody on earth, they could say, and what, what amazes me, people may at that moment desire or want to help you. Mm -hmm. But when your prayers are resolved and when your problems are resolved, God is the only one that puts them in the depths of the sea yeah. and remembers them no more. That's Everybody good. else still remembers them. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's so much for that that's encouragement. Right. Now, I'm going to go ahead in the interest of time and bring these five, these six points out. When you read Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15 to 21, you'll discover that there are six things that Paul prayed about. Okay. In the interest okay. of time, well, I'm just going to go ahead and bring them out, and you'll get a chance to read them in your study life. But one of the first things he prayed for is in verse 17. He says that, that, the, God of our, that the God of our Lord Jesus mm. Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom. Mm. That's the first thing he prayed for, mm -hmm. for us to have the spirit of wisdom. Amen. Second thing Paul prayed for, mm -hmm. wisdom and knowledge. Mm -hmm. Thirdly, verse 18, he also prayed that we have the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. Mm. He said, Lord, I'm praying that they get wisdom, they get knowledge, and they also, that these things lead to the eyes of their understanding being, being mm. enlightened. Mm -hmm. yeah. You got to pray when you open your Bible because you can't get enlightenment That's unless right. you pray for it ahead of time. Yes. Mm -hmm. Also, he prayed that they may know what is the hope of their calling, mm -hmm. what are they, what, that they may know what the hope of their calling is. F uh, fifthly, he prayed that they would know what are the riches of the glory of right. his <laughs> inheritance in the spirit. If you understood your inheritance, Mm -hmm. then you wouldn't walk around like an orphan. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. good. God does not have grandchildren. Mm. Yeah. He has oh, children. Thank you. I've never seen the grandchildren of Israel. Mm -hmm. The children of Israel. I've never seen we are the grandchildren of God. Mm -hmm. There is no closer connection than a no. child to a father. Mm -hmm. So don't walk around like you're an orphan. Yeah. And the last thing he prayed for, that we might know what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us, who believe. Amen. If you understood the power that God made available to you, you wouldn't be walking around like life is just a humdrum aspect right. and you're in a quagmire of a relationship with Christ. Mm -hmm. We are not locked down in this pool of uh, inactivity. We are simply in a journey and a part of that journey is the Lord is filing away anything that doesn't resemble him and that's why intercessory prayer is necessary yes. so that our faith as Christ said will not fail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the book of Philippians, uh, chapter 1, verse 3 to 11. And I'm making reference to these because I want you to go back and look at these. Paul brings out how the, the prayer, the note in Paul's prayer, if you were a Philippian church member, you would appreciate the way that Paul prayed for you. Mm -hmm. Paul prayed so that when they received his letter, they would know that he's not just praying for good Bible studies mm -hmm. or for a great walk with Christ, but he was praying in a sincere, he says in verse 10, mm. that you may approve the things that are excellent 
that you may be sincere mm. and without offense till the day of Christ. Mm. You know, and then also being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. So Paul is praying for these evidences to show up very clearly. So quickly, six things, Jill. Yay. <laughs> six things. Um, one, pray not just, your prayer is not just about content, it's not just the content of your prayer, but the condition of your life. Mm. That's good. Confess your trespasses to one another. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Mm. James 5 verse 16. Not just the content of your prayer, but the condition of your life. Yeah. Second one, God does not answer prayer just because we ask. He answers because we obey him. Amen. Psalm 34, 15, the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. Right. Thirdly, the desire that God has for each one of us. God wants us to pray for each other. Yes. Abraham prayed for Abimelech and his wife. And when God prayed for Abimelech and his wife, say that 10 times, Abimelech <laughs> yeah, and his that's wife. A tough one. <laughs> Not only did God hear that prayer, but God blessed them with a yes. child. Mm -hmm. Also, Moses prayed for Israel, Numbers 11, verse 2. Then the people cried out to Moses, and when Moses prayed to the Lord, the fire was quenched. Mm. Pray for people. And yeah. the fi five and six, Obedience is a prerequisite to prayer. Sure. Mm. First John 3, 22, and whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Yes. And lastly, mm. God also answers a prayer of the one asking for forgiveness. Mm. Repent, therefore, of your wickedness and pray God if perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven you. Mm. That is Acts 8 and verse 22. Lastly, God never gives a $1,000 answer to a 10 cent prayer. <laughs> if your prayer must mm. mean something to God, if, your prayer, if you want God to move when you speak, you must move when God speaks. Amen. 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 Yeah. Thank Greg? you, Pastor. Wow, fantastic <laughs> intercessory prayer. I have Wednesday, it's unseen mm -hmm. powers at work. And yeah. uh, you've probably all seen the little cartoons where it shows like a devil on like right one shoulder uh -oh. and an angel on the other shoulder and they're talking to the poor guy in between like eee, and his ears like oh wow but you know there really is a great controversy there really is right. a battle yeah, yeah. and right. there's really unseen things that are going on behind the scenes mm -hmm. right. and it's over us i think pastor kenny i liked what you read there was a quote that you read early on about if the curtain could be rolled back yes wow mm. what's going on it's a battle between christ and satan but it's over us and it's over souls yes, it is. so yeah. unseen powers at work yeah. the lesson brings up a very fascinating um, example of this uh, unseen battle that's going on and that is daniel chapter 10. Mm. so i'd invite you to turn to daniel chapter 10 we're going to attempt to go through these verses rather quickly uh, today in our allotted time but uh, starting with verse uh, 2 and 3, it says, In those days I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant food, no meat or wine came into my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all till three weeks, till three whole weeks were fulfilled. A question for you, why was Daniel in mourning? You'd have to go back to Daniel chapter 9, is that right, Pastor? And that explains why Daniel here is uh, trying to uh, figure out why uh, God's people are still in captivity. So Daniel is here in chapter 10 of Daniel. He's mourning and he's interceding for three whole weeks. That's a long time. Oh. That's mm -hmm. 21 days. Mm -hmm. And uh, Daniel chapter 10 is uh, he's seeking to understand from God regarding the fate of his people and uh, why they're still in captivity. And then going down to verses uh, 4 through 9 of Daniel chapter 10. Uh, just real quickly, uh, Daniel is describing um, Jesus here. It's a uh, man clothed in linen, mm -hmm. waist girded with gold, face like lightning, yeah. eyes like torches of fire, mm -hmm. arms and feet like bronze. Mm. And then here now is where we start getting into this unseen battle that is uh, taking place. If we look at uh, verses 10 and 11 of Daniel chapter 12, it says, Suddenly a hand touched me, mm -hmm. which made me tremble on my knees and on the palms of my hands. Mm. Verse 11, and he said to me, O oh, Daniel, man greatly beloved. That's beautiful, isn't it right there? Yes. Right. Understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright, for I have now been sent to you. While he was speaking this word to me, I stood trembling. Mm. So who touched Daniel here? Mm. This would be the angel mm -hmm. touched Daniel. And I think this is really precious because here is Daniel. He's struggling, he's praying, he's fasting. Mm -hmm. yeah. And here an angel says this wow. and touches him. That's right. And then he says, man, 
greatly beloved. You know, I think about our own struggle in our own lives. You know, we're trying to figure out what's going on. We've got maybe this voice in this ear and then another voice in this other ear. And we're trying to figure out what's going on. We're interceding to the Lord. But God says, you may not quite have the answer right now, but you're greatly beloved. I still mm, right. care um, for you. Wow. So then moving on to uh, verse 12. This is where it gets more interesting. And, uh, and I, I think is what's interesting is like, okay, my prayer is not being heard. Daniel's been praying for three weeks. He's been fasting too uh, for three weeks. And it seems like his prayer is not being heard. And Daniel chapter 10, verse 12 says, Then he, the angel, said to me, Do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Well, wow. It, you know. Beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> from the awesome. first day that you set your heart to understand and it to is. humble yourself before your God. What does it say there? Your, your words, words were heard. heard. Yes. Amen. And I have come because of your words. Mm -hmm. The angel was sent to answer Daniel's prayer from the very first day. Maybe it didn't feel like things were happening, but God heard his prayer. That's right. And uh, I like Isaiah 66, 24, and it says, and, uh, and it shall come to pass that before they call, I will yeah. answer. Mm -hmm. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's the battle, verses 13 and 14 of Daniel chapter 10. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me, that's the angel, 21 days. And behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, came to help the angel. For I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia. Now I have come to make you understand what will happen to your people and their latter days, for the vision refers to many days mm. yet to come. So we're kind of having a little Bible study here. Oh, so just right. quickly, the yeah. prince of the kingdom of Persia, mm. that equals Satan. So you can see here that there is a supernatural warfare mm -hmm. uh, that is uh, going on yes. as Daniel is praying here right. in Daniel chapter 10. Mm -hmm. Just really quick, these are some just notes you can jot down to do further study later on, as Pastor mentioned in his part. Yeah. Uh, John 12, 31, Jesus called Satan the prince of this world. John 14, 30, um, also Jesus refers to Satan as the prince of this world. Paul calls Satan the prince of the air. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 2, um, mm -hmm. verse 2. So then we have Michael here in this verse of Daniel chapter 10, verse uh, 13 and 14. Michael is referred to as Christ. Uh, the term Michael is used five times in the Bible, and Michael means who is like God. Mm -hmm. And I think of Revelation chapter 12. It was read earlier, and uh, it's a very well-known passage. And it says, and there was war in heaven, and Michael and his angels fought against who? Right. The dragon. Fought against the mm -hmm. dragon. That's right. I think of Jude chapter 9, it talks about uh, Michael and the archangel, Mark, Michael the archangel. He was contending with Satan over what? The body, the body of, of Moses. Yeah. So again, you see a conflict here that's happening between Christ and Satan. Mm -hmm. But again, right. yes. um, Michael is referred to as Christ. I like um, what it says here in the lesson. If you uh, look with me in, in your lesson, hopefully you're studying along, as Pastor yes. Kenny mentioned, oh, yes. by going to ABSG. Is that right? Mm -hmm. right. Okay. Yeah, you can download the lesson. It says, um, why did it take three weeks for the prayer to be answered? What temporarily hindered those prayers? Mm. It says, Daniel 10 draws the curtain aside and reveals this struggle between good and evil. Mm. As Daniel prays, Michael, the almighty Jesus, descends from heaven to beat back the forces of hell. Amen. Although we may not see it, Jesus is at work to answer our prayers of intercession as well. He is a mighty savior. Not one of our prayers goes unnoticed. Praise the Lord uh, for that. I want to just jump into quickly Job as another example of the conflict that's happening. Job chapter 1 verses 6 through 8. Mm -hmm. And just skipping down for lack of time, I like verse, um, well we can start with verse 7. And the Lord said unto Satan, where do you come? And Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, have you considered my servant Job, mm. that there was none like him in the earth, a perfect man and upright, one that feareth God and eschewed evil. Yeah. You know, I think about this battle that's going on behind the scenes. It's a battle that's very individual. Right. It wasn't like Christ and Satan were just talking about, hey, the world, they're talking about Job, an individual person. Mm. So it's amazing to me, Ryan, I think about right. what if uh, God in heaven right now is like, Satan, have you considered Ryan? Uh -oh. Whoa. Pastor John, right now. Wow. Well, he's Satan, considered have you considered? Times. You know, you think about that, though. That's personal. That's you know, that's right. where the battle yes. is taking place right. over us as individuals. So how do we fight? Because we're being fought over. Mm -hmm. So what do we need to do? Go to Ephesians chapter 6. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're being fought over, and we need to equip ourselves. Ephesians 6, 
uh, verses 11 through 18, mm -hmm. and it says what? Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the mm -hmm. devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, mm -hmm. against spiritual wickedness in high places. Mm -hmm. Verse 13, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand, withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Going all the way down to verse 18, it talks about also prayer. So Amen. for the unseen battle that we're talking about today, we need the belt of truth, yes. the breastplate of righteousness, Try it. the yes. shoes of the gospel, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, and of course, we need prayer as well. Yes. And I like Luke 22, mm. verses 31 and 32. It says, uh, Jesus is saying, Peter, Satan has desired to have you, but I, Jesus, mm. have prayed for you. So again, insert your name there. Yeah. Greg, mm. Satan has desired to have you, but I, Jesus, yeah. but Jesus mm. oh, has wow. prayed for you. So put your name there. Boy, that's powerful, isn't it? You have Jesus Christ, the Son of God, interceding on your behalf. And he's there in that battle behind the scenes. Yes, there's a battle going on, but we know, as Mr. Danny always says, read the back of the book, Revelation. We know who's won. That's Christ. So yes, there's a battle that's going on. But if we put on the whole armor of Jesus Christ, yeah, we have right. nothing to be afraid of. Yeah, right. So in closing, the battle is real for sure, but we do not have to fear for Christ is on our side yeah, so good. long as we submit and commit our way unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. yeah, wow, absolutely. thank you so much. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah, wow. wow, you know, just listening to everyone <laughs> talk, you know, that's, a, that's the blessing of Thursday's lesson because you get to glean and hear mm -hmm. from all of the blessing that comes before it. But uh, Man, just focusing in on prayer. In fact, that's what Thursday's lesson is entitled, Prayer Focus. And I think there's kind of a double application to this particular uh, lesson, this particular title, mm -hmm. being that, yes, we need to focus on prayer. And I so appreciate uh, Pastor Mark Finley's approach to this, this subject, of the fact that we're talking about witnessing. Mm -hmm. We're talking about making friends for God. But can you make friends for God and lack prayer or do it without prayer. Mm -hmm. Prayer is such a vital, important aspect of Christian living. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, there are often those chapters, those verses, those chapters, those passages in scripture that we've read so many times. Um, and I'm about to open here with 1 Samuel chapter 12. So you wanna go there, 1 Samuel chapter 12. I've read the book of 1 Samuel through it many times. And this is one of those texts that never really stuck out to me in my early years of reading scripture. Uh, but not too long ago, actually on a Sabbath school panel, uh, I think it was Miss Shelley who had read this, uh, this text, and it just stuck out to me and I never forgot it. Uh, but the lesson opens with this and it kind of sets the tone for the importance of focusing on prayer or prayer focus, not just focusing on prayer, but also that in your prayers, God wants you to focus in on spe some specifics. God wants you to be specific in your prayer life. Tell right. him what it is that you need. Tell him what it is that you want in the sense mm. of his will, obviously, which we're going to read in just a few moments, according to his will. But notice 1 Samuel chapter 12, verses 22 through 24. Powerful, powerful. This is, it shakes me when I think about this. Mm. It says, for the Lord will not forsake his people, mm. praise God, uh -huh. mm -hmm. for his great name's sake, because it has pleased the Lord to make you his people. Yeah. Wow. Moreover, notice this, as for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord mm. in ceasing to pray for you. Wow. Whew. That's deep. But I will teach you the good and the right way. Only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart. For, uh, for consider what great things he has done for you. Mm -hmm. Now tie that or pair that with Job chapter 16 verse 21, which is very simple. It says, Oh, that one might plead for man with God as a man pleads for his neighbor. Mm -hmm. wow. When you take these two passages, especially that 1 Samuel chapter 12 that we just read, verses 22 through 24, um, according to the Bible, it is a sin yes. to neglect praying for your brothers and sisters. In yes. Wow. And that, that's powerful. And, and you know, to, 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 to think that we often... We often find ourselves in a situation where we hear of people that are in need of prayer. We hear people that are struggling. We hear people in general that we know need the Lord, but we're busy. 
You know, we've got our careers, mm -hmm. we've got our lives ahead of us, we've got, we've, we are busy, busy, busy all the time, mm -hmm. but we don't take time to pause and pray and intercede mm -hmm. for our brother to, to pray an uh, intercessory prayer. Mm -hmm. And I, I had mentioned in one of the previous lessons the three legs of the stool. You know, we have, I think Brother Lee Vinden brings this out in his All About Jesus Revival Seminar, and he talks about how, you know, you have to have those three legs on that stool. If you take one off, it doesn't stand. That's right. And so that would be Bible study, prayer, and witnessing. And you know, many of us struggle in one of those areas. Some of us struggle in all of those areas. Uh -huh. But if you remove prayer from, if you remove that leg that says prayer from the Christian life, the, the, the stool will not stand oh, properly. That's right. That's right. And so uh, we have so many beautiful promises in the Word of God in, in relation, uh, in regards to prayer. Uh, one that I often do as I'm in pastoral now and answering calls and talking to people on the phone and praying with them, I never cease to forget this particular promise found here in 1 John chapter 5, mm -hmm. verses 14 through 16. Mm -hmm. uh, more particularly verses 14 and 15, but you got to tack on verse 16 as well. So 1 John chapter 5, notice what the Bible says beginning in verse 14. Now this is the confidence that we have in Him. I love that. Yes. That if we ask anything, and here's the key, mm. according to His will. That's yes. right. Right? And you can't just ask anything. Lord, give me a million dollars. It may not be His will for you to have a million dollars. <laughs> so we have to pray things according to His will. Uh -huh. And the Bible says He hears us, right? Mm -hmm. And if we know that He hears us, Whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of Him. That's a beautiful promise. You lift yes. up a prayer to Christ and you say, Father, this is this. I, I'm, I'm praying, Lord, this is what I need in my life. And I pray, Lord, that it is according to Your will. But as Jesus prayed, nevertheless, not my will but yes. Yours, right? right? And He hears us and He will answer. But notice verse 16, rather interesting. If anyone sees his brother sinning a sin which does not lead to death, and that kind of throws some people off. Wait a mm -hmm. second, all sin leads to death, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, but continue reading and we'll explain. He says, if you see your brother sinning a sin which does not lead to death, he will ask and he will give him life for those who commit sin not leading to death. Mm -hmm. there, is a, there is sin leading to death. I do not say that he should pray about that. So obviously what he's referring to here would be obviously all sin. According to 1 John, uh, the book of 1 John chapter 1 there, we're told that if any sin, any sins, uh, manner of sin that we confess, he will hear us, he will forgive us mm -hmm. and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yeah. But the one sin obviously John would be referring to is the unpardonable sin. The one sin that a person can commit, in other words the state in which we can not be listening to or rejecting the leading guiding power of the Holy Spirit. Of course Jesus calls it blasphemy of the Holy Spirit and of course I believe that is what he's talking about here. The one sin that he cannot forgive obviously he says do not say that I should. That we should pray about that but those sins which does, uh, that does not lead to death, those sins that we may commit but we are forgiven because we bring them to him. We confess them them, we repent, we place them before him. Jesus says, pray for your brothers and sisters in that situation. Pray for them because he will hear and he will answer. When we pray for others, the lesson brings this out. When we pray for others, we become a channel of God's blessing to them. He pours out the river of the water of life from heaven's throne through us to them. That's powerful. Satan's whole host trembles at the sound of earnest intercession. Yeah. Right. Wow. <laughs> and I love this. I love this quote here. Testimonies for the Church, Volume One, page three forty-six. I love this right here. Satan cannot endure to have his powerful rival appealed to, mm. for he fears and trembles before his strength and majesty. Mm. And the sound of a fervent prayer, mm -hmm. at the sound of a servant of a fervent prayer. Excuse me. Satan's whole host trembles. If you want to make the devil shake Come in his now. boots. Send up a prayer, right? Yeah, yeah. Send up a fervent prayer. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Pray for the church. Pray for your yeah. pastors. Pray for yourself. Pray for your family. The devil trembles when you open the prayer line and you begin to discuss with Jesus as one talking to a friend. The okay. host of, of, of the devil, they tremble. I often heard some, one, some, somebody uh, said, said this to me one time and I never forgot it. They said, if you want to know how popular the Sabbath school teacher is, then go to Sabbath school. If you want to know how popular the pastor is, go to the divine worship hour. Mm -hmm. But if you want to know how popular God is, go to prayer meeting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh -huh. hmm. yeah. That always stuck with me yeah. uh -huh. because often we find ourselves, you know, our you know, Sabbath morning services packed, right? Mm -hmm. to, for the most part in some cases. Um, you know, sab Sabbath school and divine worship hour. But prayer meeting, we struggle. 
This is, a, this is an aspect of the Christian walk in our churches and in our lives today. We need more mm. prayer. Yes. I often think of that passage in Scripture, which is actually a positive story. It's found in Acts chapter 12. Um, and you can go there if you want, want to really quickly. I may reference a couple of scriptures here. But Peter gets thrown in prison by Herod. Mm -hmm. This is where Herod kills James, the brother of John, and he throws Peter in prison. And after Passover, he's going to deal with Peter, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it's interesting. Verse 5 of Acts chapter 12 says, Peter was therefore kept in prison, and constant prayer was oh, offered wow. to God for him by the church. Mm -hmm. Now, what astounds me about this, while it is a positive story, yeah. that obviously we know the angel breaks Peter out of prison. But it's interesting here that notice verses 12 and onward. It's so, so when he, was con when he had considered this, he came to the house of Mary. Now he's out, right? Mm -hmm. So he goes to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname is Mark, where many were gathered together praying. Who are they praying for? They're praying for Peter. Peter. Lord, save this brother. Yes. <laughs> Herod's going to kill him. We, 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 he's a, uh, I think it's John. No, no, it's, uh, it was uh, the brother of John, James, was murdered. Mm -hmm. And so in this case, they're saying James is gone. Now Peter's about to be gone. They're praying for this brother, but notice. And Peter knocked at the door. This is verse 13. <laughs> and the girl at Rhoda answered. And verse 14, it says, When she recognized Peter's voice, because of her gladness, she did not open the gate, but ran in and announced that Peter <laughs> stood before the gate. But they said to her, You are beside yourself. <laughs> no, no, it can't be Peter. You know, I think often, is that how our prayer life goes? Wow. You know, we often need to pray, but we also need to believe in what we're praying for. Yeah, right. These yes. people are paused and praying for Peter to be released from prison, to be saved. Yes. And while they're praying, God is answering their prayer. Yes. This brother's at the door knocking, and then he comes knocking. They're like, hey, Peter's here. No, it ain't Peter, right? We're often, oftentimes we're in disbelief mm. of, of what God's word actually says and the promises that he's given us in reference to this amazing, beautiful aspect of our prayer life. We need to pray more. Yes. We need to believe in the power of prayer, and we need to believe that God will and can answer those prayers according to his will. So my final appeal here is pray. Pray, 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 as Paul says, pray without ceasing. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I think that's some good stuff. <laughs> Praise God for that. I, if my uncle always said when there was hard, times would get hard and difficult, he'd say, pray, kids. Yeah. And so I'm saying that pray, right. kids. This is time we need to pray. <laughs> mm. Final thoughts. We have, oh, what, a minute and a half or so. What Final thoughts. I just want to appeal to you to intercede in behalf of others, to mm -hmm. make a decision every day to lift up someone's name before the throne of grace. Amen. There is such a thing as called prayer prevention. Now, if you want to not prevent your prayers, listen to what Isaiah says, Isaiah 59, 2. But your iniquity have separated you from God, and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. Lay aside the iniquities of your life. Lay aside the things that so easily beset you, and there will be no prevention to your yes. prayers. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. you no, know, there is an unseen battle that's going on, and it's over us. But I want to encourage you, take Ephesians chapter 6, 11 through 18. Put on the whole armor of Jesus Christ today. Mm. Yeah. Well, I just want to echo what Pastor said. You know, I was reading this this morning, actually, as I was uh, praying and, and considering this subject. And, you know, the Bible says, as well as the spirit of prophecy, that often it's our sin mm. that separates us from God and keeps us from hearing, uh, from answering our prayers. So lay your sins before the Lord and pray to Him in faith. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's been a good study. I've been blessed myself. Desire of Ages, quickly, just a line. 504 said, by faith, a prayer presses back the power of the enemy. Mm. And by the grace of God, we're pressing back today. We, we're glad that you joined us. And by the way, don't forget next week, we've got an important lesson beyond number five, spirit empowered witnessing. Be sure and join us then. We look forward to spending our time with you. Amen.